and it is of the press, the program where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it as much as time will allow us to do. And I won't be alone. I'll be joined by Aisha Yesufu, who is the co-convener, as you do know, of Bring Back Our Be uh, Girls, rather, who will be reviewing from Scotland virtually. Good to have you, Aisha, this morning. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Amaka. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you, too. How are you today? Fine, thank you. As far as Nigeria will allow us to be. <laughs> Aisha will come to many of Nigeria's stories in a bit. <laughs> Let's begin the story reviewing the papers. We have a couple of papers up for review this morning, but we will begin with the Nation newspaper, and it will be displayed for you. Uh, before we get to do that, it says massive floods coming to. Oh no, that's not that's not the mean. Let's let's begin properly. Sorry, Buhari's anti graft war on cause, uh, says the federal government, and uh, you can see the picture of Lai Mohammed there. The story is on page twenty five. Now Nigeria's widest is oh sugar. Why Oshiba just helicopter crashed by AIB? That story is on page five, and crew lost a visual contact. That's tragic. Um, the story is on page eight. Panel clears additional of wrongdoing. The African Development Bank boss is up for re-election. The story is on pages eight and 11 of the Nation newspaper. Massive flooding coming to Lagos and others. Agency wants Ogunquara, Ekiti Rivers, also to be affected. At least they're telling us now in good time. I hope we prepare for this. The story is on the front page, but it's continued inside the newspaper. I believe it's page eight there. Only senior secondary school three uh, students to resume in Lagos and in Ogun State. And that's for the WIAC exam to be able to sit for the exam. The story is on the front page. Again, it's continued inside the paper. CRR, uh, CBN holds 900 billion Naira customers deposit with banks. That's also on the front page. And we have Lagos FCT Ocean issue guidelines on aid Kabir uh, prayers. Uh, Malaya loses art appeal on page five. And we have a picture story there. I believe that is the um, construction of the third mainland, the partial closure. Uh, we can see, yes, the Honorable Minister uh, was there yesterday, Babatunde Fashola. And then um, there's something, uh, don't, I'm afraid I can't see what is there. Don't uh, link Okumbo with the Zionist case. Um, on do Council poll 22, uh, for August the 22nd and lawyers vote MBA ESCO. These and all this you can find inside the newspaper. Let me now hand over to Aisha Yusufu to begin. Aisha. Ah, thank you so much, uh, Amaka. Just yeah. looking at all the headlines here, there are quite a number of things. But for me, I think I'll just take on the flood. I mean, telling us that massive flood is coming to Lagos is mm. not really news. The news should be telling us what the government is doing to prevent this massive flood. This is something that we've had year in, year out, the flooding in Lagos. I mean, with the global warming in the world and climate change and all of that, then it's something that nations are getting prepared. But then in Nigeria, we have very selfish leaders who have refused to allow us to have sophisticated problems. We are still fighting just the mundane problems that we have. So we've not had time to focus on the issue of climate change. But mm. for me, that is not the issue. What the government is doing uh, should be the issue. Uh, uh, and then before you move on, before before you move yeah. on to yeah before you move on to your next uh, line of thoughts there i completely agree with uh, the issue that you've just raised uh, what, what next yes we're going to have these floods what next because I, I wish we can lay hands on our clips you'll be so shocked every time it rains just a little drop of it everywhere is flooded and business is affected mm -hmm. lives livelihoods you know affected and we don't seem to get a solution i just wanted to add that yes that's very crucial and it's important that we begin to look into the direction of what's the solution for this problem that has always been with us so please do continue with your thoughts there uh, thank you so much. Uh, the next thing that I'm, I'm looking at is on the issue of panel class addition of wrongdoing, uh, which is it's, it's a welcome news because uh, it was quite distasteful all the accusations that were levied against him 
uh, you know, in terms of the portism and a whole lot of uh, allegation. But it, it's quite uh, uh, good news that he has been he has been cleared of uh, of any wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. And then on the issue of Fosibajo's crash, uh, uh, the helicopter. I think that what that happened in 2019. I think uh, normally when there's always a crash, there's going to be investigation to find what happened. And the most important thing I think we should take away from that is ensuring that we prevent such accident uh, happening again. The essence of an accident is actually to learn. You learn from it. We just just stay and then you allow it to keep on uh, repeating itself the way that we've seen. Uh, the other issue of uh, Buhari's anti-graph war on says federal government. The only there's no anti graft war. There's only massive corruption in Buhari's government, and and it's really sad. If we're just seeing what we are seeing right now is the tip of the iceberg. It's the same thing we had during uh, Jonathan as uh, Jonathan's administration when citizens were crying out about all the corruption and there were numerous investigation and all of that by the uh, House of uh, uh, National Assembly, but nothing really came out of it. It's still the same thing. There are massive, massive corruption in this administration. It's really sad that the president who came on the, on the, with the, on the mantra of fighting corruption is actually the one who is giving room for corruption to thrive, and not only giving room, but actually rewarding people who have been found uh, to, 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 have been, uh, to have behaved uh, corruptly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just want to ask you, I don't know, what's your thoughts on this? Because th this conversation, we had a bit of it in the news uh, this morning. And, um, you know, the PDP asking that the president should re resign because of all the, ca the issues that has to do with uh, corruption that we've seen, especially with the Niger Delta uh, Commission, all the development there. And I'm wondering, um, is that going to solve our problem? Is, is it a question of the leader resigns, uh, which would, we know, I don't know, whether he's going to do. Well, Uche Sakondos, they've come to say, Lai Mohammed has come to say that, that that's irrelevant. We shouldn't be thinking in that line. But my question is, why do we wait until we can't handle it anymore before we begin to speak truth to power? Why do we not recognize at the early stages of the issues that we have as a nation and begin to ask you know, questions and begin to ask that our leadership uh, you know, show us a level of accountability? Uh, the thing is not that people don't ask. Uh, we, do, we do make demands, even as citizens, that uh, we, we do ask. But the fact is that nothing ever gets done because they can get away with it. The biggest problem we have is the fact that People can afford not to do anything, and they, they are rewarded for their uh, bad behavior. In as much as PDP does not have the moral justification to ask for resignation because they were absolutely as corrupt as corruption can be, and uh, today, uh, sadly, we are still in the same shoe or even, even worse. But if, if I may say, I mean, far back in 2017, I had called for the president. Yeah, I think it was 2017. I had called for the resignation of the president. And I remember I got a lot of backlash, death threats, everything thrown at me. People were so angry and everything. The president has failed. And resigned. if he had any honor left in him, any shred of honor, honesty, uh, resigning would have been the way out. Uh, for him. Uh, but then, hey, this is Nigeria where people, even when they are bad, they do the wrong thing, they stay on in power, knowing fully well that nothing will be done uh, uh, about it. And the citizens, uh, they, they seem to have the citizen in their palms who are unable to sit up and, and make demands and go out and ask for their rights and, and the right thing to be done. So it's not that people don't ask, it's just the way the situation that we find ourselves. Mm, quite unfortunate. All right. May I say that you continue with your thoughts on the other headlines there? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so what are the other headlines, of course, uh, uh, look getting for me here. It's uh, on the issue of the Ted, Ted Mayland Bridge, uh, mm -hmm. with the, uh, this thing that we have there. It's quite unfortunate that this keeps happening. I mean, beyond Ted Mayland Bridge, what other bridges are we building? What other ways are there? And then this whole closure, the, the state was closed down for, for months, yet this, this wasn't put into place. And then people have to, when people were at home, what was the best time to have done all of this, to have actually done a good part of the work. And it's really sad that we just keep getting ourselves here. And then there, of course, we have the Edo 2020 election. It's always there. It's always on the news. Oshomole is saying to PDP, don't focus on things I said in the past. And this simply shows uh, the lack of integrity 
with which we have people who run in the public office. And I think it is high time for Nigerians to begin to ensure, we begin to ensure a quality control on the kind of people who run for office. I mean, mm. if you're talking about integrity is not complete until it is consistent. And you can't say one thing today, tomorrow you can say another thing, and it's absolutely okay because they say it's quality. I mean, we should do away with this kind of qualities. Mm. We should have qualities of men and women who have character, uh, capacity, and competence, and has absolute real integrity, not the pseudo-integrity that we have right now. Mm. Very strong comments there from Aisha Yesufu. All right, I, um, uh, in the interest of time, um, I want us to quickly move to another paper. I, I do know that you don't mind. Uh, so let's take a look at the Punch newspaper now and see what is happening for the Punch newspaper. Power crisis deepens. Embed fails to pay Jenko's 181.39 billion naira. That story is on page 19, I believe. Again, we have the African Development Bank Independent Panel clears additional of wrongdoing. Uh, Reps Simon Emefiele and the Pemcom boss others over 300 billion naira funds on page 27. Netherlands and Switzerland to repatriate 200 million dollars uh, Malibu deal cash. That's according to the AGF. The story is on page 21. They're still expecting that that money will come in, right? And we have again just a reminder, as always, the COVID. And I think of this just to remind you again that we are at 41,804 in Nigeria confirmed cases. Thankfully, 18,000 plus have been uh, discharged, recovered, and reunited with their families, whereas 868 people have died as a result of COVID 19 here in Nigeria. Just a quick uh, update on that. Now we have the big story, COVID-19 hazard allowance. 33 states failed to pay as 854 doctors and nurses test positive to COVID-19. That story is on page two. The Ogun uh, National Association of Resident Doctors disagree over payment. Now Abia owes doctors 16 months salaries. That's over a year. That's scary, okay. And then we have something here. Uh, Facebook and Twitter delete um, videos of US doctor uh, claiming COVID-19 cure. We all saw how that thing caught fire yesterday. And then we have something of Firobot demands salary refund from demoted DG. It's not quite legible, I apologize. And then um, Eid El Kabir, federal government declares a Thursday and Friday as public holidays. The story is on page 11. Azekome meets a salami panel, testifies against Magu, and submits exhibits of video and other documents according to the news. That story is also on page 11. I'm not sure what the picture story in the middle is. I can't, unfortunately, read what is there. But anyways, uh, let me hand over now to you, Aisha. I'm sure you have a couple of stories calling for your attention, apart from the ones that I've already mentioned in the Nation newspaper. Let me hear your thoughts, I. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, even though the uh, from what I have here, the writing is legible. That picture story is uh, it's, it's of Kaaba, and uh, you know at this time of the year, it's supposed to be the time of uh, Hajj, okay. and normally this is the time you have millions of people in Saudi Arabia doing Hajj, and it's, it's this empty. That's to tell you the magnitude of the uh, of the effect of, of this uh, of this disease that we have, the pandemic that we have uh, on ground. I haven't said that. Thank you for, uh, that. for me, I think that it's so tragic the kind of country uh, that we have, and the fact that we do not have respect. Uh, we do not dignify our our, our people, our, our, our citizens. Mm -hmm. And I can't just imagine whereby a, doctors are being owed 16 months uh, salary. Abia owes doctors 16 months salary. I mean, what is Abia State doing? Yet you have people who are looting money all all the time and and we, we just make fun of it just joke about it these are not these are not things for joke mm. these are devastating 854 doctors are not test positive to this to this virus we are not giving them the right equipment they need we are not giving them the right uh, kits for them to safeguard themselves we are not paying them their salaries if anything happens to them if, if they die their families i always think their children are not even guaranteed good quality education because the education 
uh, last Saturday in Nigeria, the quality of education you get is dependent on the economic status of your family. Mm. And so why do we why do we do this all the time? Meanwhile, you have countries, serious countries. For example, in the UK, they're doing everything possible. They're they're lowering, they're making it easy for doctors to, to come over and, and be in, in their country. Yet the ones we have that they have stayed on, they have not left the, the country, mm. we are not treating them uh, the way uh, that uh, we should. I mean, our government should absolutely be ashamed. Uh, of, of themselves and also citizens also for not making the demands that they should do, for not taking up their responsibility and holding government to account and making the demands. Ordinary half of the things that we are reading here on our on our headlines are things that in other countries people jump out uh, on the street. Mm. Having said that, I, mean, I would yeah, just Aisha, before to, before you before you proceed. Yeah, before you, yeah, before you proceed there, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just wondering to myself, you know, why sometimes when people go to hospitals and they say, oh, they are not being treated well by doctors, nurses, and all of that. And if we push forward, I just want to push forward um, this conversation of owing doctors what is due them and, you know, those in medical practice, I mean, anybody. Um, isn't this also, how do we expect these people, quite honestly and frankly, to, to be functional, you know, to be able to attend to the sick person when we've not taken care of their financial needs? I'm just sitting down here and I'm wondering who's, who's concerned about their mental state? We, we had that conversation again about teachers whose salaries are being owed. Who's concerned about their psychological state of mind? I mean, a, 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 a hungry man is an angry man. If you've not paid a doctor or nurse what is due them, and we want them to deliver, how, how does that add up, really? Like you said, why are we having this conversation all the time? We have so many questions, it seems, but very few answers, and it's unfortunate. I shall please Frankly, I, I must say, Amaka, like I said earlier, the, the Nigerian citizen is not dignified, even in his own country. And this, this, this cuts across board, and sadly, that's the reason why we have very angry citizens, people who sometimes they behave in a manner that you just be surprised. Because like, we are all abusive. We have we are in an abusive relationship with our state, with our country, with our leaders, and it, it, it affects us all. And coming to think about, you know, as a doctor, when you're seen as a doctor, it's a status uh, kind of uh, occupation. You are seen, even when you go to the hospital, I remember reading an article where they were like, even when you go to, to, to market, the moment they know you are a doctor, they are going to increase the price for you. Mm -hmm. They're going to, because they assume that you have money. And yet, these are people who are not being paid, and you expect them to give the best to, to the nation, and they need to pay bills. You need money to be able to survive, to have a decent life in Nigeria. You need money. Even if it's to, to pay school fees, of your children and all of that. So it's really quite hard. But you see, for me, the biggest problem that I have is that, that these are professional bodies and a good number of them. These are people that can come out and shut down our nation and say to our leaders, enough is enough. But because everybody is doing their own bit, even the doctors, they have their own private clinics. The reason why they can stay and not be paid and still be there is because they have private clinics where all they are operating, they work in, while working in the government, they work in private clinics where they send people to and then they are able to make their own living, they, they are comfortable, they feel they do not need to make the money. I mean, at the end of the day, Sudan, it was the, it was, uh, the uh, how do I put it, the professional bodies that practically came out and did the Sudan uh, revolution. But here in Nigeria, everybody is minding his own business as long as they are getting their salaries one way or the other. Even when they are not getting their salaries, because they can get it in other fraudulent ways, in other unethical ways, they are good. They just keep continuing. They forget to understand that as long as there's no good governance, we all are affected. The life that we think we have, it's really nothing because mm. we had good governance. You, you saw what happened with the private teachers uh, association coming out to make demands for their salary. All those years, I never even knew they had a body, they had association. Sure. When we talk about good, good governance, they never they never come out. When we talk about the SS food account being depleted, they were nowhere to be found. But then, hey, COVID-19 happened and they don't have money. And in other countries where they have reserves, Government is taking care of the citizens, but here we don't have. It's that government is taxing and taxing and taxing the people more and more. more it's really sadly. quite sad. Yeah. We'll move on in the interest of time. All right. Let's, let me, you were saying something oh, about the Netherlands. We on, Amaka, before we move on, there's a very 
there one here about the Netherlands, Switzerland, to pay two hundred million dollars Malabu deal cash. Unfortunately, what we've seen over time is that this money are brought in and they are looted by the ones that we have right now. And it's really, it's really quite sad. We need to begin to track this money. We need to begin to make demands on government. The way people, people with people we send you text 3 a.m., 2 a.m. asking for money. They will call you five times. They will call you, why are we not holding government that is responsible for taking care of the citizen? Why are we not holding them to account uh, in the same way? Mm. It's sad. It is sad. Thank you very much. I, uh, let's also take a look at uh, another paper before we round up for today. Time is really running as fast as we can't even hold, uh, hold it. We have Nigerian Tribune here up for a review very quickly. Uh, it will be put up, but before they do that, I'd, okay. Um, it says, I will just leave off the ones that we have talked about. So, ex-pension boss Maina released from Koje prison. That story is on page 30. And court issues warrant of arrest against SNAS clerk Omolori on page 6, I believe, of the Nigerian Tribune. And Ondo, uh, Akere Dolu picks Ayeda Tiwa as running mate on page 6 as well. Why Oshibajo helicopter crash? We've talked about that. And defection, Dogara betrayed my trust, according to Bauchi governor on page 4. All right. We have reps on cover clauses uh, ceding Nigeria's sovereignty to China and probe implementation of uh, $849 million uh, rail project. China may not sign $5.3 billion Ibadan Kano rail loan if probe continues. Uh, the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, is giving that warning. Explosion in Lagos, uh, two killed and vehicle shops destroyed. That is in Ajawa Estate late uh, last night. Actually, unfortunately, we have picture stories to that. Unending debate over hydroxychloroquine as medical doctors debunk US-based doctors' claim. On Facebook and Twitter, YouTube pull down video. No specific cure yet, NCDC insists. All right, I, let's take two stories uh, and see what we can do uh. with our time. <laughs> yes, uh, grabs on cover clauses ceding Nigeria's sovereignty to China. I mean, it's this Ch Chinese debt that we loans that we keep the loans we keep collecting from China. It, it's unbelievable. We've seen what has happened uh, to other countries where they have had to where China have had to take over some you know national assets in in, in, in other countries, and we're collecting this money anyhow. There's shadiness in in the whole of it. it there's of there, it's opaque. The, the China isn't coming forth to, you know, it's not transparent. The countries that are borrowing are also not transparent. And, and it's really sad. For me, what I find most disheartening and very annoying is the fact that where the, the, the Minister of uh, Transportation, Rotimi uh, Amit, is talking about the fact that China might not assign the other. Let them not sign. Do we even need this money? This money, we are collecting it. We are not, are we using, we are not even using it judiciously. People are looting it. Let me just read out exactly that as, as part of that agreement. The, according to uh, the agreement says, the borrower hereby irre irre irrevocably okay. waives any immunity on the grants of sovereign or otherwise for itself or its property in connection with any arbitration pr proceeding pursuant to Article 8, uh, Subsection 5, thereof with the enforcement of any arbitral award pursuant thereto except for the military assets and diplomatic assets. I mean, it, it's really worrisome, all of these agreements. Are, and this is what comes from when you have people in place who, who, who don't think of the long run, who are not intelligent enough to think what what if what what is the repercussion of this thing we are signing for? What, what, and and dot their eyes and cross their teeth and check all the what if. So they are all all they are interested in to get this money and as much as possible award contracts to themselves and then get part share out of it. They don't care about the effect it's going to have on Nigeria fifty years from now, twenty years from now. The unborn generation that we are borrowing this money. Use it for them to pay. We are not thinking about them. And, and, and for me, it, it's really uh, a, a very sad one. Mm. Indeed, there's no free money anywhere, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. There's no free money in the world. I mean, we, we have to pay. And China, it's, you know how they, uh, I mean, they, they are something else. It, it, and it, we've seen other countries that have had to pay the price, but yet we are not learning. All our 
our officials, like our government is interested in is to borrow, borrow, and borrow more money. And in the last few years, over, uh, I mean, China has practically been like, how do I put this? Uh, the one that has been carrying us along because that's what we've been borrowing for. We've been borrowing even money, borrowing money to service debt. Yet we have not reduced the cost of governance in Nigeria. Yet we are still paying our politicians, humongous amount of money. Yet we are still wasting money. Yet money is being looted. What, meanwhile, we are actually borrowing money to service debt. That's we are borrowing money to pay the interest on the money we had borrowed. And Nigerians are going about their business businesses. We are blaming everybody. We are blaming principalities and powers. We are blaming village people. We are blaming enemies. <laughs> we are not blaming ourselves. <laughs> we are the problem. And that's what we should focus on. Our government is leading us down the road. And we are just uh, following them right into that. All right, before we start blaming uh, principalities and powers, let's wrap it. Thank you so very much, Aisha Yesufu, for your contributions, as always. And do keep safe out there, Ai. Thank you so much, Amaka. Just like you know, Nigerians, we abdicate our responsibility to God. We fight for God. We live our fights to God. Instead of us to fight for good governance, we rather blame village people mm. and enemies. Let's it's fight unfortunate. Fight. It is. Thank you so very much. And that's how we're going to wrap it for Off the Press. Remember, the time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa, Monday to Friday. I am Amaka Okui. <laughs>